Today we're going to go over base clock overclocking on Ryzen 3000 chips as well as several other improvements that were made in the 1407 BIOS update for the X570 Tough Gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So recently I saw that this motherboard that I have right here got a BIOS update, and initially I was really hesitant to actually update my BIOS because I like to go by the philosophy of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. However, I was told by several people that this BIOS added support for spread spectrum as well as base clock overclocking, so I decided to try my hand at downloading it and see what I could do. Now, when I first got this motherboard, one of my biggest complaints was the fact that it didn't have base clock overclocking. In the past, with CPUs such as the, uh, I believe it was the Intel i7-4930K, I was able to actually get close to breaking some world records at the time by using base clock overclocking. And now the reason why I like base clock overclocking so much is the exact reason as to why it's dangerous. It actually raises the base clock of your motherboard which affects a whole lot more than just the CPU speed. It could affect things such as your SSD speeds or even the PCIe to your graphics card. So if there are other bottlenecks in your system, this can help improve the overall score but that's exactly what makes it dangerous. In fact, overclocking via base clock, I would consider to be the most dangerous way of overclocking your chip, as when you increase the base clock on your motherboard too much, if you have bad components or you're just unlucky, you could actually do something such as basically fry your SSD, which, well, there goes your Windows install and I hope you had everything else backed up. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into this BIOS and go over what's changed and how to base clock overclock your CPU if you are interested in doing that. And if you do decide to overclock via base clock, what kind of results can you expect? All right, so here we are in my BIOS, and I apologize for the terrible camera to the screen quality, but unfortunately, it's just not within my budget to go out and get a screen recorder right now, so you're just gonna have to deal with this. Now, as you can see here, I'm on the 1407 BIOS revision. It was built on 4.1.2020, so not that long ago. And before we go on over to AI Tweaker, I just gotta mention a few quality of life improvements that I noticed after updating my motherboard. So, updating to 14.07, I noticed that the boot times seem to be a little slicker, a little snappier, so I'm getting into Windows just a bit quicker. And another thing I noticed that's actually a big quality of life improvement is that when I restart or start the computer from a cold boot, it no longer ramps what I believe was the graphics card fan to 100%. So I'd start the computer or restart it, and I'd just get a huge whooshing sound that was really obnoxious, and right after I updated, that's gone. So that's great. Now moving on over to AI Tweaker, you'll immediately notice that they've added BCLK frequency and SB clock spread spectrum to this front page here. Another thing you'll notice is down here below, you'll see a CPU core ratio per CCX, and that's something that's new to me from 1201. I'm not sure if they added it in 1407 or a previous revision, but I'll briefly talk about that as well. Now, starting with the BCLK frequency, this is, like I said earlier, a really useful setting, but can, it can also be an actually really dangerous setting because this affects the base clock of the motherboard, and so thus a whole bunch of other stuff that relies on the base clock of the motherboard, such as storage, is also affected. So now you can go ahead and punch in like 101 or any other normal number like that, 102, etc., but one thing I noticed is that you can't do decimal points, which is actually really annoying. I've been able to do that with motherboards in the past, so I find it strange that I can't do it here. After you change it, you'll notice that your memory frequency and your F-clock frequency both change, which is good because if the F-clock frequency didn't change with the memory frequency, you'd actually see a reduction in performance, as with Ryzen, you need the F clock frequency to be half of the memory frequency to get full performance. Now, going back to base clock frequency, I did go ahead and try and punch in 101 and restart with auto settings to see what would happen. And unfortunately, if you change the base clock to anything other than 100, it automatically makes you do a manual overclock. So there's no way that I know of currently that you can get around that which is unfortunate because if you're doing a PBO overclock or a PBO bug overclock, you can't add to that overclock with a base clock bump. So that's a little disheartening, but it's still useful if you're doing a manual overclock. Now I did try punching in 101 for the base clock with everything on auto, and unfortunately in my case, it did seem to cause some sort of errors or bugs. 
And the error I got wasn't like an error on the motherboard. It just made it so that restart and startup times took forever. To me, that's kind of a red flag of there's something kind of going wrong. Now, it could have been just fine, but I also just don't want to have super long startup times. So after I experienced that and saw that it only worked on all core overclocks, I pretty much gave up on base clock overclocking as for me, it doesn't help at all. Now for you, if you're doing a manual overclock and it doesn't give you any errors with your storage like it did for me, base clock overclocking could be really helpful. It could make it so that you can get your F clock just a little bit higher so that you can get that higher number. And so that's really great. But be very careful when punching in numbers. I would be very wary of going over, say, like 103. It's kind of hit or miss. Some components are completely fine. I've heard up to like 115 some components have been able to take. Some components, you hit like 103, and bang, they like die or stop working. So not only does it not work with PBO auto overclocking, but it also doesn't work with default values, and it can give you some errors. But moving on from that, the actual most important setting on this motherboard update that I've seen is the SB clock spread spectrum. This setting is included in motherboards as per FCC law. Apparently it can kind of mess with certain frequencies if you have it set to a static 100. So before you disable the setting like I did, you might want to go ahead and read up on what the setting does a little bit more and check where your location is to see if you're near anything that could be affected by this. But for the most part, you should be fine disabling this as I did. And now the reason why this setting is so important to me is that my motherboard was stuck at 99.8 on the base clock with this enabled. And disabling it allowed it to set to 100. So that means that every single other component that relies on the base clock is being set to its true full performance. And while that might be a really, really small difference, to me, it's a difference. And so I'd really like to get the full performance I paid for. Now moving on down, we have another new setting, at least to me coming from the 1201 BIOS version, the CPU core ratio per CCX overclock. And this setting is really important because it allows you to target your fastest cluster of cores to get the most performance out of your manual overclock. And while you could do this previously before with Ryzen Master, doing it through Ryzen Master required you to open up Ryzen Master and apply it on every single restart. So having it right here in the BIOS is a much better solution as you can just set it once and then forget about it. Now this setting is most important on Ryzen 9 processors such as the 3900X and 3950X because they have two CCDs with two CCXs in them each and one CCD is a lot faster than the other. So you can go ahead and go on in here and punch in Let's say you're able to get 4.3 gigahertz all core previously with your 3900X. Now you can set one whole CCD to 4.3 gigahertz and the other CCD to say 4.45 gigahertz. Now you might even have some CCXs that are faster than other CCXs. And so then you can punch in something like 4.5 gigahertz on four cores, 4.45 gigahertz on the other four cores, 4.3. 275 gigahertz on the other four cores and then 4.3 gigahertz on the other four and so then in that way you can maximize your all core overclock as best as you can but with that out of the way i only saw one other change in this bios as compared to the 1201 that i was on previously and that would be this amd pbs option here and when i click on it it has a data link feature exchange setting and i'm not entirely sure what this does but if it was something you were looking for I'm sure you do. But that's about all I saw with this 1407 update. So at the end of the day, if you do have this motherboard right here, you definitely should go ahead and update your BIOS as not only does it allow you to disable and enable spread spectrum and add base clock overclocking, but it also had quality of life improvements and stability improvements. So if you haven't updated, I definitely would recommend you do so. But if you're considering base clock overclocking, in general, I don't really recommend it. However, if you are on the edge or you're doing some sort of extreme overclocking, doing maybe 101, 102 can help you achieve that little bit of a higher score. And if you're comfortable with the idea of potentially destroying some of your components, 
I say have at it. But what do you think? Do you think that base clock overclocking is just a waste of time? Do you think it's too dangerous? Or is it your favorite way of overclocking? Let me know what you think in the comments below, as well as what type of results you were able to achieve if you did do it. But that's all I have for this one, so I will see you in the next one. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.